Hey YouTube, I have something really important to share with you today. But first I want you to think about the most expensive lie you ever believed. It could be financial, emotional, maybe it cost you a relationship or another opportunity. Nobody likes that experience. And unfortunately when we're looking for puppies, especially designer puppies and the oodles and doodles, there are three lies that are told all the time. And it ends up costing the people who believe those lies not only a lot of money, but a lot of heartbreak too. Because at some point they have to decide, do we keep this puppy that we've fallen in love with or do we have to get rid of it because we believed that filthy liar? Hey, so before we jump to the three lies, I want to make sure you watch to the end of the video because I have a little caveat that will help you know whether or not a breeder who's telling you these lies is just lying and blowing off smoke or maybe they do understand the science behind breeding and they can make these commitments and these guarantees to you and you can trust them and go ahead with your, uh, with your financial investment and your emotional investment. I bring Remy into the picture because half Labrador, half German short hair, uh, you would think that would resolve some of your joint issues that the Labradors are known to have. You've got a smaller dog in the German short hair, um, not, as, not as known to have the, the dysplasia as the Labradors are. Um, this dog has been, this dog knows the vet maybe better than any dog that our family has ever known. Um, multiple knee surgeries, from the very beginning, um, a hernia from uh, the time he was a pup. And so this, this dog is one example of the fact that you can't, you can't cross breeds and take for granted that you're going to get exactly, you know, that you're going to resolve the problem with the health problems that, uh, that you might be trying to avoid with, certain, with a certain breed of dog. All right, one of the most disappointing things that uh, new Labradoodle owners might uh, discover is the fact that their puppy sheds. Uh, most people buy these dogs because they don't shed. All right, so the last thing that people tell you about uh, designer dogs in an attempt to get you to invest an enormous amount of, uh, of money uh, into a puppy is that they will try and convince you that the temperament of whatever, whatever crossbreeding they're doing is going to be better than the temperament of either of the two breeds, uh, standard breeds. And, and let me just kind of go again to emphasize the fact that, look, when it comes to science, there's absolutely no way with a cross with a crossbred puppy to guarantee what kind of a temperament you're going to get. You're going to get something between full bred mom's temperament and full bred dad's temperament, somewhere there on the scale. And breeding really does matter. Now, I I believe that you can train a lot of puppies, you can train some aggressive behaviors out of puppies, but but DNA and genes, those things are still there. And, uh, and, and this isn't a drive-through. It's not, it's not a puppy drive-through where you get to order the temperament you want. So if you're going to buy a designer breed dog, understand this. You need to be fully aware of all the pros and cons about the, the poodle parent. Uh, and if the dog is you know half poodle and half Labrador is one parent, whatever. if there is a dog in the mix, you need to understand what the temperament of those dogs are, both pros and cons. Uh, I'm convinced that one of the lies that everyone tells you about their dogs, no matter what kind of dog it is, full bred, half one, half another, total mutt, you know, half Labrador, half sneaky neighbor dog, whatever, one of the lies that everybody will tell you about their dog is that their dog is super sweet and would never harm a fly. People are often blind to the negative temperament, behaviors, traits of their own dog. Uh, be aware of that. So if you're gonna, if you're looking to get a, a Bernadoodle, make sure that you're fully aware of the pros and the cons to owning a Bernese Mountain Dog and owning a Poodle because the truth is, no matter what any breeder says, your puppy could get anything temperament-wise, characteristic-wise, look-wise 
between that Bernese Mountain Dog as a full, you know, complete total Bernese Mountain Dog attitude versus full complete total poodle attitude and any mix in between. That's the science that's, uh, you know, that, that really contradicts the myths and the lies that people tell you about uh, about their crossbed designer dog, and uh, and and usually again, it's it's in an attempt to either convince you that their dog is superior to yours, or it's a breeder who's just trying to make a quick buck and make you feel okay about spending twenty five hundred dollars on a dog that you really don't know anything about until the dog gets older and grows up, and and you kind of have to see it unfold in front of your eyes. Uh, it is possible for someone who understands the science behind breeding and who have been breeding the basically the same stock, the same males and females long enough. Uh, it is possible, especially when they get to third or fourth generations, for them to more accurately tell you what kind of behavior you're going to get, what kind of coat you're going to get, what kind of health you're going to get. And so if you look into the history of your breeder, and ask them, you know, how many times have you bred this female with this male? Or how many times, you know, how, what generation are you on in your breeding program? And if they can give you some really good solid answers to that, you know, we're in our fourth generation of this breeding program, or we've bred this male with this female three other times. And here are the pictures of their puppies, or here are the people who bought those puppies, you can call them. That breeder who's going to be comfortable sharing that information with you, you can trust them. And, and with a higher sense of, of confidence, you can feel like you're going to get the kind of puppy that you've been promised. On the flip side of that, if you get a breeder who, first of all, doesn't have any idea what you mean by how many generations, or when you start asking questions about the science of breeding, they give you the, that blank stare that you always gave well, your zoology teacher, when he started talking about the, the science behind breeding, you're going to want to avoid them because that breeder is telling you just what you want to hear. They're not telling you the, the truth about their dogs or about their puppies. If you want to know more about um, bad breeders and how to identify them, check out this video right here. Uh, it will give you the 10 signs to bad breeders, to dead-end breeders is what I call them. Uh, and it'll help you identify, no matter what kind of dog you're buying, whether or not that's the breeder that you want to go with. If this video has been helpful to you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We'd love to have you uh, join us for all of our videos, whether we're talking about training or dog behavior or even simple things like naming your dogs. I really appreciate you watching the video today. And uh, if you've got an extra second, go ahead and click that like button before you, uh, before you move on to the next video.